Hey everybody, welcome back to Merchant's Cove. Let's keep merchanting. Okay, so it was Jen's turn when last we left off. She's got her bouncer over here ready to deal with corruption, which is a good thing because now Jen is going to bend all of her effort to getting this boat full of green guys and over on the black market dock because if she gets corruption, she'll get rid of it with her bouncer. So that's what she's thinking. And how is she going to go about doing that? Well, I think for starters, Jen is going to spend a little bit more time hiring more people. Me, I'm just focusing, I'm, I'm running the place by myself. Jen wants to get some help here. So she comes back down. She's going to spend more time hiring one of these three folks just looking for a job here in the middle of town. And I think Jen is going to hire uh, this piggly little fellow here um, because, well, she gets in even better with the Warriors. Remember, she's trying to get in good with the Warrior Guild, and she gets in good with the Bards. Now, she's going to lose some points because that's going to be a little... There's going to be some ne'er-do-wells hanging around her area because this guy, well, he's a, he's a bit suspicious, a bit questionable. But Jen immediately gets to use this power. Take somebody out of any boat and move them to another boat, which is what Jen's going to do right now. All those green guys that um, I put over here to sell my tarot card, one of them just up ship using Jen's little power and came over here to this ship. So uh, I mess with Jen, she messes with me right back. And now um, she's done that power and she will, she'll go on ahead and put this guy working the forge. So Jen never has to do the forge action herself now ever. She can completely ignore it and uh, let this guy run the forge. Although if Jen has all forge run, uh, set up. That means if Jen does it, she could trigger all four of them. This this apprentice forge um, that she just hired, he can only activate one or two forges. Uh, not all four like Jen herself can. But anyway, that was Jen's turn. Hiring this guy took two time, and then a new one comes, slides over, a new one comes out. And so Jen goes one, two. And hey, look at that. She is now going to add somebody else to a boat, and she is hoping it would be so awesome so awesome to draw a green. Although she'd be happy to draw a gray. Let's see what she gets. A yellow. A noble. Ugh. See, if Jen had a green, she could put it in here and then, and then because this boat is full, it'll come over here where she wants to sell on the black market and she'd have four to sell to. Ah, but that's okay. She just wants to make sure, um, you know, because if I do the same thing again, I might make it come over here. And so Jen's going to get this filled up. And so the black market now has three bards and one noble to sell to at the end of the day. And we're waiting for two more ships to get filled in. Once two more ships are filled in, one of these will fill th go into this dock. One of these will go to this dock. Then the remaining ship on each side that did not um, get to come in and engage in trade and commerce, those people will go and hang out at the appropriate guild, which means those guilds will get stronger. And remember, Jen is trying to get as many red um, warriors into the warrior guild as possible because that's going to be more points for her at the end of the game. So Jen has a vested interest in making sure both of these boats don't make it into port so that these reds will make the red guild stronger. So she wants both of these to come in to these two spaces. All right, so she's got an overall strategy she's pursuing, and that's after, and, and now remember, if Jen decides to run her shop, she will get to activate both of these guys. For two time, she'll get to do two guys worth of action because she has invested in her infrastructure. Whereas me, I'm just getting more corrupt. Um, all right, so that was Jen's turn. I'm here at the end of the clock, so it is my turn. And let's see, oh, I totally forgot to roll them bones. So let's see what we got. Show me what you got, Mystic Forces. All right, the bone is by itself. All righty. Well, that's okay, because I wasn't going to be able to chart the stars again anyway. So let's try and figure out what I am going to do now. So I could start hiring people. I would like to hire a bouncer to get rid of my own uh, problems there. But let's see. Oh, the coin came up positive this time. So I think that means... Oh, I, I like how everything has a thematic name. Let me find out what that is. That means I can um, divine. No, it's Twisted Fates. Yeah. Select a half of that contains a coin. Right. So I'm gonna twist the I'm gonna twist the fates, which means since it's a positive coin, this action is only gonna cost me one time. If the coin were cursed, it would cost me a time and a curse. And what can I combine it with? I can combine it with the voodoo doll to be able to get more control over the dice, or I can combine it with a die to X align 
So there's two things I can X. I can reset these lines so that I can start doing horoscopes again because it gets tougher and tougher to fill as you get closer to the edge. Or I can do an X up here. And this means I'll score points equal to the number of people in the red... Um, you know, the, the warrior, the bard, the noble, or the wizard guild. Now, the guilds aren't very full, so I wouldn't want to X there. But I might want to X... I mean, if I X this, I'll immediately get a blue or a red tarot card. And then I could start filling here to do a market action. Ah, oh. so I use the coin in this to do an X, refill this, get another thing built, quick, 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 because uh, I do want to. I mean, I mean, hey, there are still two green guys on this boat. I would still like to make some more stuff, although this would be a red or a blue. Hmm. So, but no, I want to have more control over my dice in the future. So I am combining the coin with the voodoo doll, and that means. I get two of these actions. And now later on, when I use them, I just draw a line through them to indicate that they're used. But now, anytime I want, I could change the value of the dice so I have more control over the horoscopes, more control over charting the stars. So this is what I did. And hey, it only cost me one time and no corruption. Hooray! So, um, boop! I get to go again, two turns in a row, which means I'm going to roll again. Oh, and by the way, before I roll, before I roll, we've got another person coming into a boat. Let's see who it's going to be. It's a red. Okay, so I've got to put this red in one of these boats. And unfortunately, I cannot put it over here in the boat that's already docked. Um, let's see. Since I'm thinking I might be able to make a red, why don't I put these two red together? Because if I get this filled, then they can come in here, and this center dock has two reds that I could potentially sell a red tarot card to. So I'll put that over there, and now this boat is about to come in, and then I get to go again. Alrighty. Let's see here. Oh, and by the way, if you drop in such a way that things fall out of the dish, you just put them in whichever side it was on. So if it fell over here, you put it in there. So now, the coin is cursed with the voodoo doll, both dice with the bone. With the bone. Oh my gosh, and the dice are a one and a three? That is perfect. Perfect, because I'm going to go back and do some more horoscopes. I will draw the one down here, and I'll draw the three up there. Ascending and descending. Now, um, you know, if this had been a three and a four, I could have drawn a three and a four on the same line, but instead I split them up. And boom, I've done it. I can now make a red or a blue tarot card. And remember, I'm starting to think about um, getting red. So I'm going to make a red tarot card, which goes on my little shop for sale. So now I'm hoping to sell this green and this red tarot card to the folks who are coming in. Alrighty. And um, now, I have to reset this lower line. I need to do an X because I can't get lower than a 1. And meanwhile, I, I could still do a 4 up here and do a market action in the future. So that took me two time. Boom, boom. And I get to put another person in. So, let's see. I want to see red. Show me red. Show me red. Show me red. Yes! Boom. Fill this boat in, and then Jen is crestfallen. Th remember, this is the boat that she was hoping wouldn't come into port, because then all those reds would have not come to shop. They would have gone to the guild, which means her investment in red would have paid off at the end of the game. And here's the thing. I could see her investment in red. I knew she was invested in red. So I wanted to make sure those red guys did not go to the guild, because I would get nothing for that. And now I've got three warriors sitting over here waiting to buy my red. So that is three times three. That's nine points right there, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so uh, that was that. And uh, right. So now it is Jen's turn to uh, take a, a few turns. So what's she going to do? What is Jen going to do? I think, well, Jen would like to sell more than just her, the one green sword that she's planning on making over here on this forge. But she hasn't loaded any other forges up. However, she does have a really low yellow. And so a yellow one put over here or here will combine to make a, a yellow piece of armor with, um, with no corruption. But here's the problem. Over here in the black market, there's only one person who would want that yellow piece of armor. Um, over here on the on the central, both boats come in here, but still, there's only one yellow. So making yellow is not going to sell very big because not many yellow people are coming in. Now this boat could still fill up with yellow, but it would come over here, and these people would want something big because this is the dock where people want big items, not small items. But Jen could make a yellow piece of armor with the intent on selling it on day two or three. 
She doesn't have to sell what you make on the first day. So is Jen going to do that? Now, instead, Jen could say, hey, I'll make some blue armor. Although there's only one blue guy to sell to right now. And um, 4 plus 3 is 7, which would go over the limit, which means Jen would have to um, pay... Uh, she, she would have to take corruption. So I don't think Jen's going to do that. In Je instead, Jen is going to increase her alloy supply. Remember, at the beginning of the game, she had one of each of the four-color alloys. There's these other ones that Jen can get. Jen is going to come over here. And um, let's see here. It costs her one time to do this, which is not going to let her fill up a boat. She takes one of her dice, puts it over here, and that means she will eventually get to unlock the matching die. Does Jen want... So Jen will... She'll go ahead and do this uh, so that she can unlock the blue die. So she can focus later on. Once She'll have two green dice at the beginning of the day to uh, use uh, to, to forge stuff. Or I'm sorry, not green, blue. Right, so that Jen did that. It took one time. Jen gets to go again. You may be wondering, what are these things? These uh, minute and second hands? These come into play in the second and the third day. I'll talk to them after I finish the first day. Because you can see, we're running out of time. The first day is almost over. So, Jen did this. She gets to go again, because she did a little baby step. A lot of the blacksmith actions are small little steps, interestingly. So, Jen will... Um, Jen's going to hire somebody else. Jen just keeps on hiring. She wants to get... she Because I mean, if she is going to spend the two time to run her shop, she wants to make all four of these actions trigger. So she's getting a lot more work done. So that makes sense. So Jen is going to come in higher again from the center of the board. And let's see here. Hmm... So if Jen hires this mercenary, this is some. Um, uh, she'll, they, they do some dirty deeds. It'll lose her some points at the end of the game, depending on how many gray tokens are in the uh, thieves guild. But she will get, immediately get a small yellow item. Although again, small yellow items are not a big deal right now. They're not in demand. She can get a small yellow item off this guy. But if she comes over here, she can manipulate boats again. Wow, that's interesting. So if Jen hires this one, which will take her some corruption, then that means. She could bring this yellow, put it over here, which means potentially she could hire somebody else to put another green here. And then with two yellows on this center, it would get more attractive to sell a yellow piece of armor on this center dock. So that might make sense. Although to do it, Jen will have to take corruption. But what the heck, she's going to do it. Um, or it'll be her first corruption, because remember, she's got a guy who can handle that. So Jen is only going to spend one time, which means she's going to get to go again, three turns in a row. So Jen will hire this guy, which means she takes her first corruption and keeps it secret. Oh, it's the least painful. This is negative three points, or maybe negative four or five, depending on how many greys ultimately end up at the Rogues Guild. So Jen's a little corrupt, but not too bad. And she now gets to pick somebody in a boat and move it to someplace else. And, uh, yeah, Jen will just go on ahead. Jen will take this yellow out, put it over here. And so now there's two yellows. And so Jen will plan on making some yellow armor with this to sell to the guys who are here at the center. And, you know what? You never know. Jen might still be able to fill this boat with greens and sell to this dock which doesn't give her corruption as opposed to this one. So, uh, that's interesting. As soon as one of these boats fills up, boom, um, we're going to have that. So anyway, so all this took one time and one corruption, and Jen is filling up another boat. She draws, and she gets a blue. A blue. Neither of us are making any blue stuff to sell. But remember, Jen has set herself up to be able to make more blue stuff in the future because she's going to get more blue alloy. Mm, let's see here. She'll go on ahead and put it... Here. No, no, no. She'll put it here. Because ideally, Jen would rather this boat not come into port. Because then, that means there's another red in the guild. So Jen is trying to get this boat to fill up as fast as possible so Red can come over here and help her with her guild stuff. And meanwhile, this guy, he did his first job of moving people around. And Jen will go on ahead and I'll have him adjust the forges. So Jen has more control over the heat. Nice. Okay, so that was her turn. She's finally done. I think I might have lost track there, but I, I'm pretty sure that's it. And she gets to go one more time. And so Jen is going to get ready. She's going to come over here to prepare and put this yellow one over here. Oh, what the heck? She'll put it over there. Uh, same diff. Uh, to ready to make yellow armor to sell here in the middle. 
And that took one time. Okay, cool. So Jen hasn't made anything yet, but she's got two things queued up, ready to forge. I've already made two things, but... Um, and I, I've got a pretty good uh, shot at where I want to sell those things as well. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. So finally, I get to go again, which means at the be you know, the Oracle always rolls them bones. First thing. Ooh. Boom. Oh, a big split, both dice and, um, everything else over here and a cursed coin. All right. Both dice. Hmm. Both. Oh my gosh. Oh, I've got a four, so that means I could fill this space in, but the one isn't going to do me any good. Drat. Because I have to get an X over here so I could refill the line. But, 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 I'm, I, boy, I am tempted. I've got some interesting options here. So, um, I could, though the bone is not with the dice, unfortunately, so that means I cannot do any more star charting, because it has to be the bone and the die together. And I didn't give myself the ability. I gave myself the ability to change the dice, not to move stuff from one tray to another. Otherwise, I'd put the bone in here with the with the level four, and I'd get to draw four more lines, and that would be awesome. But it, that's not how it worked out. So I could do the four to fill up the top, but I can't fill up the bottom because I haven't X'd it out yet. Um, I don't want to get another curse by using the curse coin. And the voodoo plus the bone, uh, what does that do? Does the voodoo plus the bone do anything? I don't think it does. Uh, the, the doll plus the die, the doll plus the coin. Yeah. So the voodoo, right. So I think I am just going to use the dice and even though they're together and normally that means I'd be able to use two, I cannot turn this die into a zero. So I'm just going to use the top one and fill in the four. And so, uh, now I need to put X's on both of these next steps because I cannot get any higher than a four. I cannot get any lower than one. I need to reset both of these lines before I can continue. But in the meantime, I've hit this spot. This means I get to do a market action, which means I get to fill in one of these. Um, you remember how Jen was hiring those people to get in good with the guild? With the, I can get in good with the guilds now as well. And if Jen succeeds at getting red guild members, Maybe I want to get in good with the Red Guild right now. So I don't have to keep fighting her. I could benefit from her doing all the work. Um, or I could get in good with one of the other guilds. Or, now I have a choice. Um, this action is fill in one of these spaces to get in good with one of the guilds. Or do an X. So I could do an X now to reset one of those lines. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get in good. Since Jen seems so bound and determined to get in good with Red, I'm going to do it as well. So the rules say to put a little triangle here. So now the Red like me. Uh, they really, really like me, which will come into play during market day, which is almost here because um, we have almost filled out the clock. So uh, that was my action. I didn't get to use both dice. That was kind of a bummer, but still, I'm happy to have gotten this market uh, action done before market day. This took me two hours. One, two. Okay, and we're almost out of time, folks. But um, only, as soon as one of these boats fill... Oh, and by the way, uh, we're out of, we're not necessarily out of time because you'll notice I've moved and this one uh, uh, I'll show you close up. Remember, this is a prototype in a two player game. These two spots are where you're supposed to put out two. You're supposed to draw and place two meeples instead of just one. With more players, you still only draw one, but this is it. I've just crossed this line. I get to draw and place two meeples, which means I could finish the day now. So let's see what I draw. Boop, boop. A blue and a red. All right. So that is interesting. That is interesting. Um, and really, what I'm if I put both of these into one of these boats, I'm determining who goes to the uh, you know to the guilds. And now that I want to see the red guild do better, I know Jen gets more benefit out of it, but I get some benefit out of it too because I've just gotten in good with uh, red. So. Okay, what the heck? I'll just go ahead and fill. But Jen still gets so much more. No, no, it'll, it'll come out the same. I'll fill this boat in, which means uh, this is the boat that comes into dock, and this boat immediately. Oh, whoops! By the way, I forgot. As soon as these two filled up, I should have done this a while ago. The boat that was left behind immediately. These guys went to their guilds. That should have happened a while ago. This now immediately happens. We have another warrior, and there are now four rogues, which means this has gone from negative 12 points to negative 16 points, um, unless 
Although, uh, my, uh, you know, plus two, because hey, there's two greens to offset that a little bit. So this is a very bad curse. I'm gonna wanna get rid of that. So I've done it. I have triggered the end of the day. And so what happens when you trigger the end of the day, you have this little market thing, you move it to the space right after where I went. So I move it here. And now both Jen and I can keep playing until we cross or hit this line. And it is Jen's turn. And Jen is going to hit that line now because the day is up. Jen hasn't made anything yet. So for her last action, she's not going to run her forge. She is going to run her shop, which means she activates all three of her helpers. This takes her two time. Boom, boom. So the day is over for her. And she is going to activate this. This will get rid of one corruption. Although, yeah. Uh, is she going to get any more corruption? No, she's not. So this got rid of one corruption. So that's negative four points that just went away. Uh, this guy can change um, one, two, or three of the forges by a total of three. Let's see. This is really... Uh, Jen's just going to bump this up by three. So this goes from a one to a four. That means it's going to be much easier to make weapons on this if she wants to make big items. She could have instead, like, um, she could have just bumped up one and knocked this down two to turn this into a one to make it easier to do weapons. But Jen really wants to up her shots. At, so this is already going to be a weapon. So the hotter the coal builds, the easier it is to make weapons, depending on what dice you have. So she can do these in order. She's done this one. She's done this one. And now she can forge one or two. That's all she's got. She didn't load any others up because she knew she was going to have her assistant do it. So Jen um, takes these dice back and this dice back. The coal always stays there. And um, she made her big green sword, finally, and her yellow armor. So she's got some stuff to sell. And whenever you forge, the stuff you take back, you re-roll. If there's any dice you didn't use, you could roll them as well. And the alloy you set up, you get to claim them also. So Jen gets to re-roll now, moving forward with all of these dice. And she has also locked in uh, the uh, favor of the blue gill because she revealed that. And hey, what do you know? There happened to be two blue gill. This is going to pay off. Um, very soon now, on market day, Jen's going to get some more points because she just revealed this, and there's a couple of blue guys right there. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So, that was it for her. She cannot go any farther, and I now, because she spent her two time activating all her guys, I get one more action before I'm out of time. And I could go, I can do an action that would take two, but I still end up stopping on this stop spot. So, let's roll them bones one more time. Wah! The bones tell me nothing. That's a willow quote, folks, for all of them out there. All righty, what do we got? Ooh, um, <sighs> so this is interesting. The uh, bone is with a single one. That's not great. But all I got to do is one, and I've got another green tarot card to sell. That's not bad. And remember, earlier on, I um I got these. I, I could turn this one into a three. Let's do it. Let's just cross both of these out. So I've lost those. I'm going to turn that one into a three. I might regret this later. And so that means I get to um, chart the stars and draw three lines. Count them. Three lines with the three and the bone. So let's go in ahead. One, two, three. Hmm. Yeah. One, two, three, and boom. I didn't get any corruption because I didn't use any of the black lines there, and I have just made a big old six-point potion. Hey, if Jen is going to get corrupt and um, sell her big green sword, I'm going to sell a big green potion and neutralize that benefit she had that she worked so hard for. And now, you can see I can still make one more big green in the stars or two smalls, um, but I can also make stuff over here and... Um, Oh, and wow, I, the one thing I'd ever do, I didn't do divination. This is the really cool one. This is you um, combine. Oh, and I could have done it because the voodoo dolls with the die. If I had chosen to, do I'm still happy with this. I'm going to go with it. But if I had chosen to do this instead, it's really cool. Four means I go out one, two, three, four. I draw a line here. You can't quite see it uh, in the dark because I'm, I'm, but again, this is a prototype, so remember that. I draw a line, and that means I get four draws from the bag to predict 
what will come into play. Uh, if I do this, I, because it was four, I get four draws and I pick one color. Say I, I, I want green. That means I would cross out all the colors but green. Oh, this pen is just dead. That's the problem. That's the problem. And the next time me or anybody else draws from the bag, if it's a green, hooray, my prediction comes true. And the sooner my prediction comes through, the bigger a reward I get. And I get four shots. So I have a pretty good shot that a green will eventually come out and give me a reward. And you could have multiple predictions on the go, um, checking to see what comes out of the bag. It's very, very cool. But I didn't do that. Instead, I chartered the stars a little bit to get one more thing to sell. And um, that took me two time. And so, boom, I don't go for it. I just stop right there. And the day is over. Uh, we've been working uh, slavishly, making all kinds of stuff. I ended up making three items. Jen has made two items. All the ships are here. And now we go to the market phase. And uh, there's a few steps to it. Um, let's see. And I think uh, the main thing is we sell from left to right. First, we sell big uh, ticket items to these people. And you don't have to take them out of the bubble. We found it kind of helps to, to get a sense for who all is buying. So everybody gets off their boats, and they're just hanging around, ready to buy. Whee! Okay. And um, first, we sell big um, stuff to here. Uh, and it would be good to sell a big blue because, hey, there's two buyers. Then we sell small stuff to all the people here. Then we can sell big or small over here. But we have to take corruption. And in addition to that, we also get the benefit... Uh, off of guilds that we have gotten in good with. Remember, I got in good with the red guild, and Jen has gotten in good with the blue guild. So we're both going to get a couple extra points because there's these reds and these blues built up. But I'll do that second. First, let's sell. Alrighty, does anybody want to sell? We both have a big item. We both have a big green item. Does anybody want to sell here? No, because they would only get six points because there's only one buyer. So we're done. These folks, they're done. Although, if I were playing with the bartender which is this board. If there was a player who was a bartender, we would not be done with them. Because if the bartender had made a bed for these people, um, he would get to bring them in and they would have a good night's sleep. And they would be able to have drinks. And they could even get in brawls. So it's a very cool little game that only the bartender cares about these people. Uh, if there's no bartender player in the game, all the meeples, they just go back in the sack after we're done selling. So no bartender means we can't grab these and sell stuff to them after the fact. So they go in the bag. Now, to the middle dock, where they only want small things. I am definitely going to sell my my uh, three tarot, my small tarot card, which is three times one, two, three. That is nine points. I am on the board, baby. Woohoo! And then this goes back in my supply. I can build it again later. I could sell my green here and make um, three times two. So I can make six more points, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not. And then Jen, she says, you know, I will sell my yellow. It's a, it's a level four. It's four points for this armor. There's two. So that means Jen makes eight points. Okay, so she sold that. And now, again, there's no bartender player, so these just all go back in the bag. And uh, finally, are we going to get some corruption? I say, hey, you know what? Jen worked so hard to get all these green folks there, even after I tried to stop her, I might as well take advantage of it. I'll take a corruption to sell to them. And, oh, it's a it's a good corruption. Or, you know, it's, it's the least painful one. Hooray! And I am going to sell my big and my small green. So, that means three times three is another nine points for me. And the big one, six times three is another 18 points for me. So, um, let's see, 18... What did I just say? Uh, six times three is 18. Yeah, so I was at 18, uh, uh, 36. Boom. There we go. I'm actually off the board. Like I said, folks, this is a big scoring game. So um, I'm not off the board. The board just, I'm off the screen. Right, and Jen says, well, I guess I'll sell my one sword. And she also makes 18. So that gets her up to 24. And so Jen did most of the work and investment to get them all there, but then I benefited from it. Um, and so right now I am way in the lead. Hooray for me. 
but, oops, sorry, uh, but Jen's got a whole shop full of people that can really streamline her operation because she can get a lot of things done with only two time. I haven't hired anybody yet. So it's anybody's guess. Uh, I'd say we're both doing pretty well right now. Uh, oh, and also Jen's got more alloys now, which means in the second and the third day, she's going to be able to make more and more and more stuff. So Jen's investing long term. I just went short term and you know, you know how that tends to go. So um, oh, the other thing that happens, in a, oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, last time we hired somebody, these guys should have come out. Totally forgot about that. Hey, here's somebody, ooh, hiring him would have gotten a big red. Oh, I don't think there were any big red sales. Anyway, these guys go back in the sack. And like I said, uh, also during sale day, if we have unlocked the favor of any of the guilds on our boards, not on cards, these cards, they only trigger at the end of the game. Currently, Jen has one, two, three... Reds times two means that's six points for at the end of the game. That's why she still wants to get a lot more red guys over here. These will trigger at the end of the game, these particular icons. And that's also at the end of the game is when our corruption will trigger. And we lose potentially a lot of points. But um, in the at the end of a day, we trigger points based on the guilds, based on how many of our board guild affiliations we got. I get two more points because I got in good. So that's two more points for me. Jen, over here, she got in good with the blue, so that is two more points for her. And that's going to happen on the end of day two and day three as well. So, but yeah, Jen, I, I, I am sitting pretty. I want Jen to... Uh, well, I don't mind if Jen gets to push her red agenda, because at the end of the game, it'll pay off. But for me, it'll pay off every single market day, because I've gotten in good with there. And I could get another one as well, potentially. So, uh, that was that. And the first day is over. And so what that means is we reset. I mean, actually, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here because uh, this is important. So we reset the clock. This comes back to 12. And before, on the first day, we started at 1. Today, we will start at 2. We have less time because this little mouse icon comes off the minute hand and blocks a space. So we have less time for day 2 to get stuff done to be prepared for all the ships that are coming in. But to make up for that, as we move forward, you know, we go and we go and we add stuff to ships and we go, you'll notice there is now, uh, we can go here, which means if we just go all the way around, we um, have less time. But we have more time if we go up here. We can buy more time because it becomes a longer track for us, but you guessed it, we get corruption. So, um, also, because I was the last player to go, I will be the first player to go on day two with a shorter clock unless we want to be corrupt. And otherwise, we have to reset up the board. Um, no matter the player count, the rightmost uh, person, no, nobody got this mercenary, he's gone. The other ones slide over, a new one comes out. It's another move people from boat to boat. Cool. Uh, we randomly put two people in each of the boats that are waiting. Two greens over there. I'm not going to slot them in. And it'll take a while. Ooh, a lot of red. A lot of red. And a fair amount of green. A couple of yellows. Interesting. Where are all the grays? There are uh, rogues in here. But no rogues have come out so far to sell to. I would actually slot them all in. Wow, that's a lot of red. There are a lot of red customers and a lot of green customers to sell to. Now Jen's kind of regretting having invested in blue. Um, but, you know, sale of E. There might still be blue customers coming out of the bag. You never know. And, um, right, so the clock is reset. That is reset. Is there anything else? I'm trying to remember. Let's just double check. The, um, yeah, return all the customers to that were on the docks back to the bag. Uh, you know, make sure the boats are reset. Uh, right, two customers in every boat. The townsfolk go away to player order. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, so we're ready to go again. And um, I am first. So... What do the bones tell me? I mean, it's just so much fun to roll this. This is the coolest roll and write ever, where I'm just not rolling dice, I'm rolling all kinds of stuff. Yeah. All righty. Ooh. Man, I really want to get an X to, to do another double horoscope. Um, but, oh, and I got the evil coin. Um, oh, and I've got uh, all right, and I, uh, a coin of two means I could draw two lines. That's not particularly good. And I've lost all my ability to mitigate what to do, what to do. I don't know, because I am going to stop right there, folks, because that should give you a pretty good idea of the flow of the game. We're going to go through three more days. Uh, for the third day, 
The day gets even shorter still, but now there are two corruption um, pit stops we can do as we work our way to get ready for the last uh, bunch of ships. You know, new workers are always coming out. The guilds are filling up, as is the rogues guild. Um, we can hire more people, and you know, because Jen, I could have been hiring people the same as Jen. It, it costs the same. If I have a bunch of people, I could activate them all at once. What do my people do? Well, they again, they get rid of corruption. They give me two dots of any type I want over here. They draw two lines on mapping the stars. Or they do an X, which means I can reset my horoscope lines or immediately score points in one of the guild colors based on how many are there. So it's good for me to hire people as well. I just haven't done it yet. I'm all on my own while Jen has a little industry going over there. And folks, that should give you a pretty good idea of the uh, feel of Merchant's Cove with these two characters. So as promised, let's spend a little bit more time going into a little bit more depth about the other four. Now, I should say, uh, Merchant's Cove actually comes with four characters in the base box. The Oracle is not one. If you check out the Kickstarter page, which is live right now, you can get the Oracle and the Bartender, which is the one I already described a bit more. The Bartender has these cute... Ador in the same way that you have these cool little 3D ships and the cool 3D uh, tables, you get 3D beds you can slop in here. And um, you know, so if the uh, Bartender puts a uh, green bed here, that makes they can make green stuff to sell to green uh, customers. But the important thing is people aren't done. They don't go back in the bag. Uh, you can grab them potentially uh, to serve them more. Although you get corruption if you grab them and they don't have a place to sit and they end up uh, going into a brawl. So that's what they are all about. The um, the time travel one is the one I haven't played yet. It comes with these uh, uh, pieces that slide around. This becomes a rondelle. The time traveler actually has an assistant, so you get two miniatures, and they're both going clockwise around the rondelle. They can't skip over each other. And um, these are populated... Let me, let me actually let me get the pieces. Because every, every player basically has their own bag of special pieces. Uh, the uh, Time Traveler brings in artifacts, but his board is interesting in that there's these pieces that define what the different worker placement spots allow. So you can see, oh, coming over here, these two items are available. Coming over here, these two items are available, and it costs one time. So the way these lay out as you move around, and as you might imagine, these can shift around as well. The shifting sands of time are a big thing. This, I haven't played it yet because the rules I have are a little bit weird about how to set the game up. So I, I just, but I, mean, I really like it. It looks like it might be the most complex of all of them because you actually have two characters, all these different worker placement spots, a rondelle that is reprogrammable, all kinds of things. And then, of course, also, you can hire people to help you run your time machine. So that's what the Time Traveler is all about. Let's move on to the Ship's Captain. Okay, this is a lovely one because uh, if you're playing the Ship's Captain, let's go ahead and get out my miniatures. Not only do you get your... Oh, by the way, here's... I mean, these miniatures are great. Uh, although, you know, these are prototype, you know, 3D printed ones, but they should give you a pretty good idea. Very nice and high detail. So the captain, right here she is. The captain um, has all these worker placement spots and she has four ships that will set sail. And her actions are basically, it's kind of a pick up and deliver game because she's got, in addition to her board, she's got a spinner. Whee! And so on her turn, the spinner tells her, um, you know, where, how much cursed treasure appears on the cursed treasure island, and uh, you know how many action points she gets to move, uh, whether she gets cursed or not, etc., etc. So after the spin happens, kind of like how the uh, you roll the bones, if you're a, you, this tells you what you have access to, and your actions are all about moving the ships around. Going out to these spaces where there are treasures, these are your big items, or going to the small spaces to go fishing, which are your small items you can sell. After you do a fishing action, say, oh look, I got them all set, boom, all the ships come back, and I would have brought back three fish. Uh, or, you know, I, again, I, I have to populate um, treasures that are out here, or the cursed treasures. So basically, you've got this whole game of deciding how to move your people around, reveal what treasures are out there, and deal with your own little fleet, and with a spinner, which is just fun. I mean, the, the sense of fun and whimsy in this game uh, is definitely shown off there. And now, probably the coolest one I saved for last. This is the Alchemist. The Alchemist has some extra stuff. Let me get that out. Has a whole extra cloth bag that's not full of people. 
Instead, it is full of marbles. I mentioned right up front, anybody who is familiar with the game Potion Explosion might recognize... Let's see, so basically, we, uh, we uh, you can see this uh, creates a little uh, incline for your magic potion bottle. And uh, as you might imagine, the alchemist is going to be all about getting marbles out and making potions based on how the... Uh, re oh, wow. Okay. Crazy. Oh, well, actually, that's right. Um, my They did warn my prototype can kind of get stuck a little bit. So uh, you can make potions and you know all that type of stuff that you would expect to sell to the people. Uh, and it's actually really cool. These are... Um, what do you call them? Glass marbles? But as I understand it, they're going to be plastic marbles in the real thing. And they will tweak this to make sure it, it flows smoothly. But it's like a whole different game. You know, getting the marbles, brewing up different types of potions, and uh, mixing them with reagents. That if you want to use the black ichor, it's called, you end up taking corruption and whatnot. So this, I mean, you know, the, the, the toy factor is high with the... Oh, what do you call it? The alchemist, if you go that way. And I think that's everybody. The base game comes with the ship's captain, the alchemist, the time traveler, and the blacksmith. The expansions that are available are the roll and write of the oracle and the bartender who plays a very different game than everybody else because they actually care what happens to these people after they leave the docks. And folks, that should give you a pretty good idea of what Merchant's Cove has to offer. And if you want to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.